who owns what land, who controls the water, and how is the pasture used. This is critical when you are discussing pastoralism, because then it is something that either uh, contributes to the conflict that is then seen, or it helps to regulate that. And therefore, there are several layers of conflict. The first one is there is the intra-conflict, a conflict that is generated within a particular ethnic group for purposes of uh, use, management, and access of certain resources. And then at the second level is then it goes beyond the ethnic communities and it expands to the inter-community, which now goes beyond, beyond, beyond just how these groups organize themselves to use the resources, but now it involves a second party who also want to use this resource. And the third level is it goes to the cross border, which means now it brings in the transboundary resources that are shared. In terms of a river, there is upstream, there is the middle stream, and there is the lower stream. And also in terms of land boundary, people then go beyond just their traditional uh, ethnic land and beyond the two communities, and therefore oftentimes it goes across the border. One of the things I, I, I discussed is uh, the instrument that the European Union used, the, uh, the European Instrument for Democracy and Human Rights. And it focused on facilitating uh, institutions such as Reconcile to build capacities of uh, the different uh, communities such as the pastoral communities. And also looking at not only using uh, the, 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 the traditional way of capacity building training, but also looking at how uh, livelihood opportunities such as micro um, the, the, the micro projects are then used to allow these communities to practice their, 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 their system, the pastoralist or the pastoralism system, but also looking at the modern systems where markets are, markets are, 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 are then created, opportunities for these markets are also discussed. And for me, that is something that has been very instrumental and very useful. But the second thing is about how do you appreciate that conflict goes beyond one territory of uh, a country and allow, facilitate governments to dialogue. But not at just at the policy level, but it also has in uh, dialogue between uh, communities themselves, their institutions, which includes organizations, to engage. So we want to see a vertical, horizontal kind of engagement between this in, in such kind of a framework. One example of a micro project is uh, a project of shared markets. One of the biggest challenge is suspicion that has been built over time that communities operate in their own, uh, you know, in, in their own in their own territory. And one of the programs that this uh, EU supported was the creation of joint markets where now these communities can, 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 can see a bit of transparency in terms of what is brought in that market, how it is sold, but it's also to, to support cohesion between these two, two or more different uh, ethnic communities. And in fact, some of them go across the border because pastoralists in, in, in Uganda come to Kenya uh, you know, to, to sell their, their, their produce. Uh, pastoralists in Kenya go to Uganda. Pastoralists in Pokot, which is a different region, goes to Turkana. The ones in Turkana goes to Pokot, and that for me is a very useful thing. The other one is about market, uh, about water infrastructure. One fundamental thing which leads to conflict is the search for water, and this is something that you know the small bit of it that was supported. We've seen four years down the line that there are still impacts and that some of these, uh, most of these uh, water projects still exist, managed by the community. It means that they have appreciated that.